Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 173, and today and all week, we're going to be talking about the Daniel Way run of Venom, which came out from 2003, I think it was 2003, to 2004, and it lasted 18 issues, and I actually really enjoyed the book when it came out. A lot of people, I remember when it first came out, early reviews on it were pretty negative, and a lot of people were like, where's, Ven you know, where's Venom? How can you have a first issue without Venom in it? Uh, sound familiar? Uh, so yeah, the fir entire first issue doesn't really have Venom. There's hints of the costume and stuff, uh, but no, you know, reveal of him. And then same with the second issue, you see Venom and stuff, but you don't get into to Eddie Brock and you're kind of wondering how it ties Eddie Brock and there's this big mystery and what I liked is that Daniel Way stuck to his guns and was like I'm gonna keep building this mystery which he did for about 10 issues before he started to give us real answers so I really like that I was hooked in and plus after like this was remember this is like a year or two after the death of Anne Wang and all that stuff we didn't get a lot of Venom stories around this time and the few that we did I wasn't really digging on so this felt like a nice breath of fresh air. It felt like a nice departure from what I was expecting. And basically in this first run that we're going to talk about today called Shiver, uh, which is written by, like I said, Daniel Way and Francisco Herrera was the artist on it. Uh, these first five issues were basically the movie The Thing by John Carpenter, which is one of my all-time favorite films in my top 10 list as well. Came out in 1982, the same year I was born. And uh, I've just been a fan of that movie ever since I first saw it when I was like eight or nine years old. And uh, so that's what this is. It's the premise of the thing. So if you don't know what that means, uh, it's basically the entire story is set in an Arctic base and uh, there's a creature loose and it can mimic people and that's what you get. And uh, I don't want to spoil the thing for you. If you haven't seen that movie, go see it. It still holds up. If you get on Blu-ray, it looks wonderful. It's a great movie. Uh, but for this one, what we get introduced to is a new character named Patricia Robertson. And she's a 24-year-old, uh, you know, I think she's in the, Mar not the Marines, I think she's in the Army or she was in the Army. And it kind of starts off, this is the only kind of negative uh, critique I have for the book from a story standpoint is that when it starts off, she's kind of narrating and dumping all this exposition on you that she says, you know, like, uh, she's like, she has like a bunch of dogs, you know, you know, uh, carrying her, um, you know, she's like on a sled and stuff. And it's like, you know, do dogs, you know, dog sled and stuff. And all these dogs are pulling her to get to this facility called the Ararat and the, uh, or Ararat. And the Ararat is like about 20 miles away from her base, which is called Christmas Town. So you're kind of learning about the environment and the layout. And they're up near the Arctic, like I said, about 20 miles or 30 miles away from the Arctic and uh, she's on her way up there being pulled by these dogs she gets there and she comes out and as she's narrating she's like you know I get all these dumb tasks they make me run errands but when I signed up in the army I wanted to prove that I could do things I wanted to prove that I could you know stand side by side with some of the other top soldiers of you know of you know that I trained with and uh, and I wanted to you know be up there you know and prove myself and basically no one's given me a chance and now they sent me you know they gave me a headset and they put me in a chair and they sent me to this base called Christmas Town uh, after I you know uh, did a, a couple missions and now I'm here just doing this and they have me running errands to this uh, other facility nearby and basically she's just returning uh, videotapes or DVDs. She's like, hey guys, we finished the movies you let us watch. Can we, you know, bring some more back? And she doesn't really know too much about this facility other than, you know, that they are doing some kind of science experiment there and they're a bunch of nerds and they had a bunch of Blu-rays or DVDs uh, that, you know, they trade sometimes. So she's returning these. So she's kind of like, yeah, I want to prove myself. And then sure as anything, as soon as she, you know, asks for that, uh, she gets the opportunity to. So and my critique is, I don't know if I would have had her narrate and dump all that exposition. I probably would have, sh you know, cut to flashbacks briefly, just show moments where she's, you know, where people aren't giving her the time of day or whatever. But I understand page count, you got to, you know, constrict. So I don't know, for me, I would have probably added in more so you could see, you know, kind of what her life is like at Christmas Town. Uh, otherwise, just taking her word for it. But since she's the good guy, good guys narrating, you kind of take their word for it. And it felt very Spider-Man-y uh, the way she was talking. I was like, okay, it kind of eases you in to a Venom story when you have someone that's a little bit Peter Parker-ish, you know, in a way. Uh, so Patricia shows up at the facility. She's like, hey, can I, you know, I have the tapes, you know, I want to return them. Can we borrow some more? And she gets no answer. It's just static through the intercom. So she's pressing it again. Hello, hello, hello. Nobody there. Then she hears someone finally respond and they go, help me. And she's scared out of her mind now. Uh, the dogs behind her are barking at the building. And so she's starting to freak out. 
She goes inside, investigates, and she ends up seeing a bunch of dead bodies. Everyone in the facility has been killed, and not just killed, but mangled. Their heads twisted around, their bodies drained of fluids. Uh, it is a nightmare, and she is freaking out, and her heart's racing, and she's just trying to, like, get through it, find the voice that was, you know, like, uh, calling out to her. She's like, look, come out. Come out to me. Like, you know, I'm near the door, front entrance, come out to me. So she was actually trying not to do the stupid horror movie thing where she just goes in and looks for the person. She's like, come to me. And the person, like, you know, doesn't answer. So she's like, oh, God, I'm going to regret this. So at least she tried to not do that, right? And so she goes in further into the darkness to look for this mysterious person who is begging for help. What she ends up coming across is a scientist who locked himself in a freezer. So she goes into the kitchen and she sees all these people just torn apart. And she throws up and she's, you know, freaked out. She's about to leave. And then she hears something on the other side of that fridge door. So she goes over to it, opens it up, and sees this scientist. And so she finds her first survivor. And she's like, okay, let's get you out of here. So she grabs him. He's like freezing because he's in a freezer in the Arctic as well. So he's, you know, hypothermic or, you know, going through that phase. And he's, he's shaking. Shaking. So she grabs him. He's barely able to speak. She puts him on her sled and she's like, all right, we found the survivor. I'm getting the hell out of here. And she takes off with the dogs and they leave. And then way back in the distance, you can see this shadowy figure standing in the distance as she departs. Uh, in the second issue, though, we get into finding out who that shadowy figure is. You thought maybe, oh, it's Venom and Venom's going to follow them. Uh, but no, actually, it's this uh, this guy named The Suit. And he shows up and he's kind of like a men in black kind of character. He's very stoic, you know, no sense of humor whatsoever. He uh, shows up to the site uh, where Venom was, now has been maybe taken away by, uh, by Patricia. And he shows up and he can't find the symbiote anywhere. And he's like, all right, there's dead bodies here. And he's intercomming someone. He's like, look, I'm at the site, but I, you know, I don't know what to do. Uh, the symbiote's not here. So I'm going to, I think I saw a sled leave a little bit ago. I'm going to go follow that sled and follow their, you know, their tracks to wherever they're going. Because maybe the symbiote went that way. So he's, you know, he has like shades on and, you know, he's got spiky gray hair, I think. And, uh, and he's just like no nonsense guy, but he's just wearing a suit. So you're like, wow, how's he not, you know, the cold's not hurting him. But, uh, you know, he has some secrets that we're going to find out soon, too. So he decides to follow uh, Patricia and where she's heading. And she gets back to Christmas Town and brings in the guy uh, that she found, the scientist, and he's freaking out, you know. And so they bring him into the med bay and they're trying to treat him. At this point, you get introduced to all the other characters, Malone, Delacroix, uh, some of the other people that work on the base with uh, with Patricia at Christmas Town. And they're like, what's going on? And he's like, she goes, well everyone was dead and Malone the guy in charge was like uh yeah polar bears will do that too and to you and she's like polar bears and I also thought that was a little weird I mean they live in a world with mutants and and, and superheroes and all this other stuff um so to just immediately be like oh it's polar it's something normal uh you know it's like you could tell by Patricia's look on her face Malone even says that he's like you look you know pale you look sick he's giving her coffee her hand's shaking she can barely drink it uh, he's trying to calm her down so to me it seemed weird he would jump right to polar bears uh but he does whatever it's almost like they're like trying to act like super you know fantastic things don't happen in this world for whatever ever reason that's my other minor critique of it uh but uh but other than you know those those are very nitpicky things because the story does move along pretty quickly and i do like this story i and my only other maybe negative critique is probably the artwork which i think is great artwork francisco herrera does a great job but the tone of this book is very intense and very you know uh you know mysterious and it's like john carpenter's the thing and you have an artist who draws kind of like humberto ramos style and that just to me doesn't fit the tone like sam keith i think does the covers of these books and uh and his art is amazing he would have been a great choice for this book or someone else along those lines if he has like this really sketchy dark you know, super, you know, big shadows, a lot of black inks, like that to me would have worked a little bit better because the tone of this doesn't make you feel any of the fear. It, it, you definitely feel like you're reading like a comic book and it has like this almost fun vibe and it's not that Francisco doesn't deliver on the horror elements or draw emotional things because he does. He does a great job on that, but I just... I would have probably gone in a different direction. But the whole point of these lines, especially these 18 issues, was Marvel Tsunami. It was part of a line uh, that involved the Human Torch comic book, the Inhumans, uh, Young Inhumans comic book, um, Sentinel, which was a comic book about a, a Sentinel, basically. Uh, and all these had different artists from different countries. And, you know, uh, for the mo most part, some of them had, you know, uh, domestic artists, but a lot of them were trying to 
get new people into comics, writers and artists alike. And that was kind of it. It was a wave of new people, which is why they called it Marvel Tsunami. Uh, so, so it works overall. But for me, I would have if I if I had the chance to you know edit or work on this book, uh, I would have said like, oh, we need an artist that could capture the horror that you're doing, kind of like how Ryan Stegman is doing right now with Donny Cates on Venom. Uh, but that aside, I mean, that's again the book itself still works for me and uh and the storyline is still great so speaking of that story you know patricia's back now she has the scientist he's freaking out the dogs now are outside freaking out so she goes and checks on them uh and she's you know having to juggle all this stuff at once and malone meanwhile is like hey look we have these generators they can only we have to turn them on at a certain time every day so we all have to kind of you know go to bed now it's like 10 p.m or whatever even though it's kind of bright out you know he's like we still got to go to bed and uh we got to you know use the generator sparing so we'll get up first thing in the morning, we'll shut off the generators, we'll get things going, and we'll get to the bottom of this. So everyone at that point goes to bed. Um, after, you know, she checked in with the dog, she had to bring one inside, uh, her main dog, Ivan, because he, it looks like he got injured. And the one thing Francisco does really well is on every character, or even the dogs, he put, he established right when you see them that they're wearing some kind of black, like, you know, or, or Ivan has like a black shriek, you know, of a streak through his hair of, uh, you know, black hair on white hair. Uh, so there's, it's really neat how Francisco did that because that plays a factor in as, you know, as the creature has now infiltrated this base. And so at night, everyone's going to bed and then they all get a visit. Uh, most of them get a visit from someone unknown, uh, obviously it being Venom. And they come in, you know, Venom comes in and takes those three people. And so the next day when Patricia wakes up, it's just her and one other guy and the scientist and uh, and the dog is even missing. And so now we already have four suspects. Which one is Venom? Is he one of them? Is he all of them? Is this the Venom we know? Is it Eddie Brock? There's so many questions. And when is that suit guy going to show up? Like, uh, there's so many things going on. And really quickly it escalates in issue three where everyone just starts getting picked off one by one. And Patricia doesn't know who to trust. And she's like, do I trust the scientist? You know, or did I br or did he bring the thing here with us? Uh, was it riding on Ivan? Was it on the dog the whole time? Uh, you know, she doesn't know what's going on. She's freaking out. And when she does find Ivan, he has like a finger in his hand. So she's like, okay, clearly he was attacked and he defended himself. So I guess Venom went in to get the dog at late at night and the dog ended up fighting back uh, and bit off the finger of whoever, you know, Venom was impersonating. So it has a very good thing vibe to it where you just don't know who to trust don't know what's going on and it's very chaotic but in a way you can follow it uh so i really like that a lot about this storyline and so patricia does her best she's trying to figure out what's going on uh and all of her teammates are getting picked off and then the suit shows up and when he shows up you know the groups they're like you know don't trust him we don't know who he is and of course venom is impersonating some of these people or one of these people so it, he's eas easily you know making it an argument non-stop and and you disrupting everyone and trying to get them to not think clearly and overwhelm them especially Patricia. He's starting to take a liking to Patricia Venom is. Uh, so the suit kind of picks up on that and is trying to protect her to a certain extent until it realizes she's the last one left alive. And the suit, even at one point, he turns to everyone and he's like, look, you know, I gotta, I believe you're infected. I gotta kill you. And the guy's like, no. And he, you know, takes a gun or another guy, um, Delacroix, I think, walks up and takes a gun and shoots the suit guy right in the head. And the suit guy drops dead. And you're like, holy crap. So whoever he was, however we can survive the cold i guess we're not going to find those answers because he's down now and then now it is just patricia with these people that she's not sure she can trust and the one guy who had answers has had his face blown off so it gets really intense from here on out uh one by one again everyone gets picked off and it's just left to just uh patricia and the scientist and uh, and they, they they bunker down and they start coming up with a plan and they're like you know what why don't we go outside we'll destroy all the cars uh, we'll take Ivan, the dog, you know, who's still alive. And she's like, and we'll, the three of us will get the hell out of here. Um, and then, you know, she even tells the scientist, she's like, look, I found you in that freezer. You clearly left all your people to die out in that dining room uh, or the kitchen area. You locked them. You locked yourself in that freezer to survive. So you're, to me, you're a scumbag, but you're going to answer for those crimes. I'm going to take you out of here and we're going to strand the, the, the alien here and the alien, you know, she's like, so give me some answers. And he's like, yeah, this is different than what it's based off of. Like, you know, he gives you a little, some answers. Uh, he says, you know, like this creature isn't like venom. It's not, it's an alien from another planet, uh, but it's different and acts different than all the other ones do. And, uh, and so as we're getting these answers, the suit comes back alive. He stands back up and he's like, yeah, I like, I'm not human either. And his face fixes itself. And you see all these little nano robots coming out of his eyes and rebuilding the skin on his face to make him look whole again. 
So the suit guy mentions, he says, I'm also from outer space and I'm a, like a, a nano race and I'm sent here to kill this creature because unlike the other Clintars, it is very different. It is, uh, it comes from a symbiote here on earth, but, uh, but that's all I know about it. And I know we got to destroy it because it, um, you know, it, it, it is a very extreme version of a symbiote. It bonds with a host and it drains them completely of all their fluids, which was something we saw in Planet of the Symbiotes. So this does tie into that continuity where there are symbiotes out there that uh, most of the symbiotes do do that. When they bond with someone, they slowly drain them. And over the course of a few years, you know, they might have to purge their host. Well, this one drains you almost instantly and it needs to constantly feed to keep going. And it itself doesn't even know what it is. It's like, I, I thought I knew what I was, but now I'm just hungry all the time. And so I'm just acting on base instinct. I'm just going to keep feeding and keep feeding. And that's just my goal from now on. So it doesn't even know where it came from either to an extent. So all that's going on and we're getting the answers that we need for the most part. But then as soon as it starts getting real, the final battle happens in this, you know, in this run. And it has Patricia side by side with scientists trying to protect him. And then the suit guy uh, dealing with the symbiote. And then he turns after he thinks he destroyed it. He looks around. He says, wait a minute. Uh, uh, he's like, you know, Patricia, come to me. And she's standing next to the scientist. And she's like, why? And he goes, because he's not human. And she turns around and the scientist is Venom. Like Venom has gone into him as well. And so it turns into Venom and it starts attacking her. And then the suit realizes, okay, I uh, I agree with your initial plan. We I destroyed all the trucks for you. This thing cannot ride one of us and get away. So now all that's left is you. It cannot bond with me. It cannot, you know, make me a host because I am nanotech, you know, nanobots from outer space. It can't bond with me, but it can bond with you. So I got to kill you. Uh, so that way you, you know, you can't be a host of this thing and it can't get away. And she's like, no, you're not, I'm not going to let you kill me. I'm going to get out of here. So she fights with the suit temporarily. And then Venom intervenes, takes the suit, grabs him, breaks him in half like a toy, tosses him aside and just is just one-on-one -on -one with Patricia now. So as Patricia's, you know, last ditch effort, she's just up against a block of ice. She's got her gun. She's shooting at the symbiote. Uh, the symbiote is not even phased by her. It's getting closer. It's toying with her. It's taunting her. It's saying, you know, like, just bond with me. Let me, you know, take you to the next location. And, uh, you know, and I, I promise I'll make it quick or whatever. And he's like, you know, she's like, no, stay away. She's shooting, shooting, shooting. She closed her eyes. And then when she opens her eyes, because the kill never comes, Venom's gone. And uh, the suit realized, or the or not the suit, not the guy, but the alien suit realized uh, that there is something else that it could probably survive better on. And this, again, a very big nod to the thing. Uh, she looks up and she goes, wait a minute, the dogs. And she runs back to the dog pen and sees that Ivan, where she was trying to keep him safe, has, has been broken out. He's gone. And now she realizes that the alien suit Venom has, you know, bonded with the dog and is getting away and the dog because it can survive those cold conditions it's made for being outside and you know and dragging people from location to location uh it knows it can survive out there better than it could if it bonded to a human host like patricia so it was smart and it's been adapting and it's and it's very clever now and it's it knows what it wants and it knows it needs to find a civilization so it can just keep eating and eating and eating and it knows it's about out of food here so it just leaves patricia doesn't even bother uh bonding with her and just takes off on ivan and then when Patricia realized that and the suit guy realized that because he after being broken in half, he puts himself together. He walks up to Patricia and knocks her unconscious and, uh, and and collects her body and is like, all right, well, this sucks. Like I have and then he calls his HQ or whoever he's talking to. And he's like, look, I have one survivor. I'll, I'll bring her with me. But, uh, you know, the creature's heading in this direction and we got to we got to track it down. And that's pretty much where this first arc ends. And it's I thought this was really good. I thought there was a lot of good tension in this. I thought Daniel Way paced this really well. And like I said, I have a few nitpicks uh, on the book overall. But w for what it is, it works for me. And I know a lot of people didn't really like this run because they're like, oh, it's no Eddie Brock. It's no this, it's no that. Eddie Brock does show up, and we will talk about that when we get to the end of the story. He is definitely involved. We're going to get a lot of answers. It's going to tie into the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards uh, especially. Uh, it's going to tie into S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury. I mean, this book gets crazy. It deals with robots and clones and outer space. It's super horror and super sci-fi, and it gets really out of control, but in a way that I really like it. And then the next issue or the next episode we do of this, it's called Run. It's the next five issues, uh, issues 6 through 10 of this book. And it's, uh, you know, basically Venom finding a small town and it uh, being protected coincidentally and luckily by Wolverine. So we get a good Wolverine versus Venom battle 
along with all these other characters, uh, you know, Patricia and the suit guy comes back, and then also some new characters that we're going to meet as well. So you guys let me know, have you read this run? Have you read Shiver or any of the Daniel Way run? Let me know what you think down below. And throughout this week, we're going to do four episodes about this run, uh, you know, covering all 18 issues. So I hope you guys uh, stay subscribed and stay watching, and I hope you guys like what we do. Uh, and again, as always, in all the videos, comment down below and let me know what you think after we make each video. So thank you so much for your time. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys in the future. Peace.